All right, guys, we are back with game two of the Northeastern Conference Finals. We have University of Delaware on the blue side versus Rutgers on the right red side. Oriana Ban coming in, same as last game from Delaware. Yep, and, and Rutgers is up 1-0 here, so no surprise coming out with that Aurelia Ban. Actually, well, kind of actually surprised. Kind of surprised. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about the LeBlanc, actually. Yeah, that I really was kind of effective in a lot of ways, but not as effective as I think would be. The Swain, they again do not want to deal with that on the side of Rutgers. Yeah, and it looks like they really don't want to... The Delaware team does not want to play against either Best Cannons or Eternal Crystals, Jax, whichever, where, whichever place they would decide to put it. Or that Tristana. Yep, it's going to be C here. They end up getting that Caitlyn again. Okay, and they might take that away as a power pick. I think that was a very critical pick for them. That Caitlyn and Nami bottom lane really provide a lot of late game. Was providing some power, but yeah, I think we'll see. I think if they pick up the Caitlyn again, they need to focus. Yeah, they're hovering it now. I think they need to focus more towards the bot side about getting it, uh, getting them ahead, and getting that Caitlyn the first tower as soon as possible. Yeah, and so no change up from the side of UD on their initial ban phase. So if Rutgers wants to, they can just run the exact same thing that they just ran. But choosing to deviate a little bit, picking up that Zach first. Let's see if the Zach manages to die a little less than Kindred. Or not Kindred, Kane. They're hovering the Kindred. It looks like Rutgers Flashing back and forth between the Ezreal and Bell. They lock in the Ezreal again for the bot lane. The Ezreal did manage to survive really well against the Caitlyn and stayed really even in CS. Trundle and Talia coming out from Delaware. This was our original draft before everything was redone. Yep, the Talia will be, a, I think, a great great pick right now she is still pretty strong and apart from the zed the zed, the zed can do a lot of damage to actually if he gets ahead the Cassidin locked in instead so more of the ap counter for the talia instead of just a straight up assassin you too will be judged morgana being banned out on the side of rutgers don't want to have the Talia or Caitlyn black shielded and the Zach engage countered. And then it looks like uh, Delaware is going to continue to focus the support role for Rutgers in their second ban phase. Yep, and I'm guessing we might just end up getting a lot of supports being banned out here, focusing on that and really not caring about that top lane. We'll see if they ban out the Nami or up oh, the Orn coming out for the top lane. I do not tolerate and the Darius banned away this time from Delaware or away from Rutgers by Delaware instead of that fifth support ban. Yep, so now we'll see here what they end up picking here, whether they pick their top lane or their support. I guess they pick their support. I think they should pick their support and let uh, leave last pick for a counter pick top. Yep, there's the uh Thresh hover. And it looks like they're going to lock him in. Yep, they do. Another reason to ban out the Morgana, so she, she is a good counter to the Thresh. Yep, so we'll see what they go with here. Their last two picks, their top laner and their support. Coming in for the side of UD. Over in that Shogath, a great tank the top lane. Can just really sustain on his own. That does pick the Shogath. So we'll see what they pick as the final pick of this game too. I think they are, they need some sort of engage support because right now they're sort of lacking in engage. They have Shogath, if he gets the Righteous Glory, can run really fast. If he gets a Rupture, Trundle Pillar, and Talia Wall to cut them off, but like no really real forms of hard engage. So it looks like they're gonna go with the Janna and let Wreckers engage onto them, kite back, and uh, just try and whittle them down with the Talia Caitlyn poke. 
Yep, that is really what they're playing there. I have the Janna, they are playing a full counter engage and disengage composition, which might work to their favor. As uh -huh. you now also have the Urgot looking in, they want to engage on you. The side of Rutgers wants to fight. And UD is going to be looking to say, hang on, wait for our correct fight that we want, and then we'll go for it. Jenna taking the exhaust. A lot of people who play Jenna right now are taking Ignite just because of how much harass she can have in lane with her W, although her W in movement speed did get nerfed by a whole five this patch. I know, yeah. she's completely unplayable. According to Doublelift, she's absolutely useless now, according to his Twitter account, so... We all know that was a sarcastic response. Oh, yeah. But it was still enjoyable, though. Just not playable anymore. Yeah, Jan is still just always one of those champions where it's, she throws a shield on you and, well, you do damage. So we'll see what happens here. They'll be getting into the game. We'll be about three minutes behind them, so we'll have the chance to kind of talk through these picks, talk through what what UD has to do to try to come back from this and what Rutgers can do to continue to pressure University of Delaware here. So again, throw in your support for your team. Let us know what you're thinking. And if you have any questions, any comments at all on the stream, please just let us know. We're more than happy to answer those and whatnot. I've got the stream pulled up here so I can see your guys' chat and conversation. So feel free to hit us up with some questions and we'll be happy to do what we can to answer those for you. The high. I did see the hashtag casters win. That'd be fun. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that might might have been me. I, I, do, I will neither confirm neither or deny whether that was me. <laughs> I will support the casters win. Why not? That'd be fun. But so going through here, let's go top down again. So you got Shogath versus Urgot here. So I feel like that really just favors Urgot. Yeah, once Urgot gets his Black Cleaver, he just hits a massive power spike and tanks really, really struggle against him. I think as long as the Cho'Gath can get out of lane and be really tanky, get his all stacks and land key rupture onto the carries, which is going to be even harder for him considering it's a Cassidy and Ezreal. Uh, Cho'Gath's really going to have his work cut out for him getting onto the carries and trying to chomp them, or he's just going to have be forced to alt the front line of Rutgers. Yeah, and then this jungle matchup, honestly, Trouble's got to get something done pre-six, otherwise it's going to be so incredibly hard to gank any of these lanes. Urgot can always get away, cast in, Ezreal Brush can find ways to get away, so he's got to be able to get some ganks off pre-6, otherwise that's going to be really devastating for him. He doesn't entirely need to get ganks off, really, but obviously, like, you want to abuse the Kassadin before he hits level 6 and has his escapes, but he can also look to abuse the Zac because the Janna, Caitlyn lane, and the Talia lane should easily be able to shove, shove in the Rutgers mid and bot and since Zach's early game is so easy, the Trundle can invade, get help from his laners, and just abuse the Zach's early game, try and put him behind, as well as trying to uh, gank the mid lane, put Kassadin behind, and get Talia the ability to roam. Yeah, absolutely. He gets a lot of great damage from that. Let's see what happens. In mid, we have the Talia versus Kassadin early game. Obviously, is more than likely going to go in the Talia's favor. She has insane early shove. She has a really strong level three, so she'll be looking to push the casting under his turret and then roam to either top or bot to try and help out. I, I assume that she will be running more towards bot to get the Caitlyn and Janna ahead early to really put the Ezreal behind and let the Caitlyn scale up much better than she did last game. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens here. Going into game two, University of Delaware versus Rutgers. Rutgers is up one to nothing. We'll see if they can take the game back here and tie it up to make it a best of three, or if Rutgers will take it to match point here, finishing off on the day. So you do also have the press the attack from the Trundle, so he likely will be going for those early invades. And you have the Ghost out of Talia, so no teleport. Abilities like the casting, but will be able to roam fairly quickly with that ghost and with her weaver's wall. Yeah, that ghost is 
slightly surprising for me, especially without taking Unsealed Spellbook or anything. But obviously, the Aries is a good summoner for her to take. It's just the Ghost kind of seems a little out of place for me. Yep, and we are in the game. We are jumping out now. Everyone's running in. Pings are going down. I think another defensive start from both squads here is going to be in order. And it looks like, yeah, nothing. The, they do, the Wreckers do not have anyone in the top side, although the Kassadin's kind of there. Yeah, but they but, did uh, out that one defensive wall. Yeah, I think... I really think the Zac should start Raptors this game and let the Ezreal and Thresh get the early push on, try and get level two before the Janicate, before they can get really just poked out of lane because they do not have the sustain they had with Alistair and his passive healing. But it looks like he's more than likely going to be starting blue buff, so they're going to be getting there at about the same time. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. The Trundle does have a little bit better kind of initial starting on the buff plus the Janna Shield, so they might they might be able to get there first as University of Delaware, so we'll see what happens though. Fairly oh, yeah. Sticker starts. We got people jumping in, hitting each other left and right, and we'll have a meat fest in the top lane. I'm going to be interested to see how well this Cho'Gath can get his Grasp procs off, especially against, uh, even though Urgot is ranged, it's not a very long range, but I don't know how well the Urgot is going to be able to get onto the Cho'Gath to get his autos and get his Grasp procs off. So it, kind of, it might be a little bit of a useless rune for him to take. Yeah. I don't know the mechanics of it, but it might be that his... His Vorpal Spikes might proc it, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it does not look like that with him yes. autoing the wave and get or getting hit. Zach did head straight to his red buff from blue, and they did get a ward on it early. The Trundle clearing three camps in the time it took for the Zach to get one. Zach going to his Raptors, and Trundle is immediately pinging on to him to try and invade and steal that away because the Cassadin is shoved in. Get the pillar up. See if he has the flash away. Yes, has the flash over. Trying to steal away the entire Raptor camp. And that's flash gone from the Zac. So he's that's exactly advantage. what the Trundle needs to be doing. Yeah, but taking advantage early. He also started with the Juve B, so he's likely going to be going for the Earth TM map. That's honestly smart from him because it does add just that extra in general sustain. So 50% bonus health regen does add to, I think, overall better than the basic potion or refill the potion that Zach does have. So yeah. good advantage there from the trundle starting to get some farm advantage over the Zach. Yeah the trundles the with his uh passive healing just the amount of damage he does with his his Q bite he sustains he sustains really well so he doesn't really even need the pots to begin with. So if he is going for the Tiamat early it is a it is just give, it just gives him a little bit of a head start, and he's already he's still invading Zach, and he's taking away his whole Krug camp as well. Yep. So he's continuing to push things out now. While the Krugs are camp in terms of their experience, they are the most efficient camp in terms of gold. So when you do get the chance to take them, it is great for your gold game. However, really just not very trying to get coming in flash flow from the brush. It really amounts to just about nothing here. The both land, land on the gate look. Knight coming down, exhaust onto the Ezreal. Eing forward. No heal from the Caitlyn. Ezreal flashes forward and autos the Caitlyn to death. <laughs> and we got a gank going on in the mid lane too. Pillar. Cassidy just able to walk out. It does manage to get that first blood on the Ezreal. With the Ignite being blown, flashes and heals from all champions except for Janna. So four summoners for three. Does manage to secure that first blood gold though, and also up 9 CS on the Ezreal, so he does manage to get his teeth locked. Well, does have to get the cold instead. It looks like Zach Flat manages to smite away the big raptor from the trundle. But looking at across all of the lanes, they're not going the way that 
I, I thought they would because the Talia is down uh, 9 CS on the Kassadin. The Caitlyn is down 7 on the Ezreal. And then the Cho'Gath is down, or is up on the Urgot by 12. Yep, definitely has some advantages there. Definitely surprising on some of the mismatches there. The Kassadin did start corrupting Potion though, so he does have a little bit more pain. He's able to really abuses mana while Talia does get a lot of it up early. Looks uh, like we are having a guest caster in a dog. Yes, we do have the doggo. Everyone welcome Talia. She will be playing for Herson as the Talia. But no, she sees a friend outside. She wants to make friends with them. But for now, I'm saying there's a ton for friends. We have to cast this game, Talia. So we are back to it. And it looks like the there is just honestly just while the wave is starting to even out for CS in the bottom lane, you just are starting to see a bigger discrepancy in the mid and top lane. Cho'Gath really abusing this this Urgot and the Kasten really taking advantage of the Talia. Now level six is able to utilize flashes out of both mid laners and Trundle. Trundle is doing a really good job of invading the stack and trying to take away his camps and establish vision just to track him. Yep, is the Trundle is up a decent amount of gold. Zach does go back and complete the first phase of the jungle item though. So I think it's gonna be kind of telling who goes to this first dragon. It is an ocean dragon. So we'll see who goes with that first. They do have a control ward down there on the side of Rutgers, but I think that Ocean Dragon, a lot of people underestimate Ocean Dragon, they just kind of take it as a, oh, it's an okay dragon, but I think its power is very good for these fights because of a fight breaking out top lane and mid lane. Both laners are level getting, six now. Getting the shove for, onto the cast and despite his rift block, and he's chunked down to half health, and the Urgot to half health as well. Both Talia and Cho'Gath still very healthy. Trundle going in the mid lane, trying to get a pillar, but you're not going to be able to cut the cast again with the pillar after he hits level 6, unless he blows it. Yurgot is now without the flash. Some good damage coming up, though, from the side of person. Playing that Talia to the best of his ability. Is that that again? Is that Talia doesn't have her flash. She's aggressively, and that costs her her life. Zach getting the kill. Yep, pushes up too far, doesn't have vision down from them, and so far that has been kind of the story of the side of of UD is just the fact that they have not really been proactive with their vision game, so it has made a little bit of a topic for them. And I, I like the UD's team comps and what like they're trying to do with their lane assignments, but it looks like their laners are just outmatched except for possibly top lane and the Cho'Gath beating the Urgot, but Janna Caitlyn should have destroyed Ezreal Thresh, and Talia should have had a very easy time abusing the Kassadin early. It looks like we have the Talia all coming in to Thresh, knocks her off of her pillar early. The... Eh. Thresh caught up by the pillar, slowed, trying to catch him. Caitlyn does manage to pick up the kill. Talia brought low, that she did not flash, no sums burned on the side of UD, whereas Ezreal healed to try and save his Thresh, but Thresh's flash didn't come up in time, and it's just not coming up. Cassidy's in the bot lane, tries to get a slow, Exhaust comes down onto the Cassidy, and the shove from the Talia misses fast. Zach, the last six one shotting in, catches the Talia, and he fall or she falls, Kate trying to ult the Ezreal, but he survives, and Zach caught back in the team his passive is popped will they be able to pick him up before he responds and Janna gets the kill yep so some trades going back and forth there and some damage going out here in the top lane as well UD yeah. might be looking to get that first tower side with that Caitlyn Janna and Trump they do have a wave coming in and this Ezreal is low and has no true shot barrage available they can probably honestly press for this tower here yeah, I think that was a really good play by Delaware using their early game to execute a gank on the bot lane and get this Caitlyn 
out of lane, get her the early gold. Thresh hook landing onto Trundle. He heard Knight coming in from him, but Thresh forced the flash away. Trundle really low, given the... And then Thresh forced the flash away. The Trundle gets away with low life. Thresh still moving forward, trying to get a pick. The Zac coming in behind, but it looks like they're just going to have to give up. Talia roaming down as well, but... Oh, the threat, the Trundle is picked off by the Ezreal's True Shot Barrage in the end. Yep, definitely taking advantage there, but overall from both teams, like good good counterplay from University of Delaware. When they had that gank coming in, they managed to press it back and play it well, but then also when they were kind of looking to back off, they took advantage of the numbers that they had in order to take down the less empowered side of Rutgers. Yeah, another gank coming into this mid lane. Kalina is still no flash. Here. And it looks like they're going to give it over to Kassin and try and get him scaling up again. And that's 3 on this Talia now. If yeah, 3 does cost her the ghost too, to no avail. It looks like this Zac is just turning online. Four of the five kills are attributed to the Zac. Biggest kill participation for the side. And we got to pause. Trundle's mouse, has, his batteries have apparently died. So while he gets new ones, we will have an in-game pause. This is why you get a wired-in mouse, boys and girls. Grab the wired-in mouse. But So let's take stock then of kind of what's going on. So, so far, the Zack has proven very effective in getting his laners ahead, primarily his mid lane. But you also have this Trundle has also proven through its power in the bot lane to really push that bot lane with that first blood tower which gives the Caitlyn then back into this game with the BF sword, <laughs> looking to get that Infinity Edge soon. Yeah, the Trundle's done a really good job of abusing the Zac's weak early game, invading him, putting pressure on him. But then the Zac is alleviating the pressure in the lanes, mid, like mid and bot, which is good for Rutgers. But I think when Delaware was getting the bot turret. I think they should have given the solo build over to Caitlyn to really get her ramping up and through her lull in the mid game and try and really get her ahead of the Ezreal now and get her scaling so she hits her late game spike before uh, the Cassidy can. Yep, you have a little bit of a duel here going on and three people coming into that top like looking for the Cho'Gath. They want the Rito God, please. And we have a gank coming in. Oh, I think uh, Elastic Slingshotting in doesn't land it onto the Cho'Gath. Cho Got oh, manages to pick off the Cho'Gath. No sun's blown. Good dive from Rutgers. Yep, and you, the bottom lane from from um, the side of Rutgers has rotated mid, so it's a three versus two mid in favor of UD. And Trundle does manage to hold off the wave in the top lane. But overall, just great play from the side of Rutgers. Again, they're just out rotating the side of of Delaware, and they're just taking advantage of where they have their advantages. Yeah, I'm surprised that uh, Delaware hasn't tried to go for the early Drake by this point, considering they have all of the pressure bot lane. I think they should have uh, gotten first turret, given it to Caitlyn, and rotated to make that, to pick up the dragon after that. But the Thresh, or the Trundle, overstayed a little, got hooked up by the Thresh, and it resulted in a fight that nothing really came of it. Yep, and you do have now the lane swap here with Cho'Gath at the bot lane. Which honestly, it doesn't really matter for UD which lane they have down there for for Dragon Support. I actually, it might actually be better with Cho'Gath being bottom since he will have the feast that he can always use to help finish off the Dragon. Yeah, that is, that is true. I'm just, I'm very shocked that this Ezreal has managed to outfarm the Caitlyn so heavily in both games. Especially with the Caitlyn having the Nami and Janna support that should have let them bully. Yeah, I'm certainly surprised. You know, Caitlyn does typically have more of that lane advantage, but just Rutgers putting themselves in a better position for success currently than the side of Delaware. So we'll to see just what they can continue to do. We've got Zach wrapping around the top side of the mid tower. 
Looks like he might be going in for a gank. He might have the show gas kind of pressuring in. Kings are going towards the top lane though. Caitlyn killed off by Zach, gets the knockup onto the Janna and Trundle. Only manages to ult the Trundle back in. The Janna flashes away. Janna comes down. The Zach is really low, but it is a one for zero in favor of Rutgers. Yep, I mean, just great play from from Bestman today, taking advantage of the fact that he does have that smite in that East Coast carry was low. Ghost pop from the side of person. Trying to get anything back that he can right now, but that casting is just all he got a lot of ages. It's really building things up. Trundle trying to catch the uh, rush out. They catch him over the wall. He doesn't have a flash to get away. And that was a really good pickoff from the side of Delaware onto the thrashing. He's going over to the Talia to try and get her some gold and get her back at this game. Yep, definitely what Delaware need to do, and that's how they really need to play their compositions, work around the lack of flashes from the side of Rutgers if they want to take advantage of things here. Getting some damage out from into the Dusk and Anda is both trading off there, but we got four people heading to the top lane for the side of UD. Even top laners on an island in bottom. We got the True Shot Barrage being used by Ezreal to try to keep that wave from pushing too hard. Yeah, Urgot has hit his Black Cleaver spike, and you see now that despite being down to farm early, he's up. The good Trundle Pillar to interrupt the Zack Elastic Slingshot. Flashes forward, catches the Trundle. Trundle forces the Flash White Thresh with the Flash Forward, catches the Caitlyn with the hook, tried to play the Trundle backwards. Caitlyn flashing away, Elastic Slingshot forward by the Zack, and the Ezreal picks up the kill on Trundle. Zack knocks Caitlyn and Janna together. Janna has to exhaust and uh the ezreal forced to flash heal away as Tilly arrives Cassin flashing forward trying to get to the caitlin but he will settle for the janna instead and now he's stuck behind the turret the elastic slingshot in by zach he is low his passive is popped and the Cassidy is going to pick up the kill onto talia but it looks like oh no the teleport from ergot will save zach from caitlin and that's a good two for O oh in favor of record and Jogath getting picked off by the Urgot ult hot lane. Urgot, you, and then Caitlyn being killed in the top by the Zack. And again, you just got Rutgers is just playing to all their advantages and hedging their bets correctly to just get the damage off. And Delaware is not respecting the fact that they can do this to them. And you see right now, at 60 minutes in, they're up. 6,000 gold and up 8 kills. That is, right now, like, almost an insurmountable gold lead or gold deficit on the side of the University of Delaware. And, you know, you see their lanes 0 2, 1 2, 1 4, 1 3, and 1 1. They're just losing on all facets right now. Yeah, the Urgot, as I was saying before the fights broke out, the Urgot hit his black fever spike and he's completely flipped around the farm deficit that he had accrued in the top lane early. Fight going down in the mid lane, and the Talia forced to flash away, casted him really low, but the rest of his team arrives in time to save him. I don't think I'm ever going to get off my point about Urgot and Black Cave right now. Yeah, I mean, Zach still like, going back in, and forced to lantern out to safety real low. But again, they're risking and they're risking correctly, and this Ezreal just absolutely smashing the Caitlyn Janelay. Very surprising there that that was the case. However, they did get the Rift Herald a lot earlier in the game. That's honestly something that I forgot about. They're going to use it to try to crack this second tower here. I'll be able to get that down on with a fair amount of ease. This wall coming out, trapping Thresh. Thresh still doesn't have class. The turret goes down, and Thresh is more than likely going to be killed. Killed by the Caitlyn. Talia really low, just nowhere for her to go. Zach coming in, killing off the Caitlyn, and Delaware got the turret, but they lose three in the process. And I don't think that was worth it for the tower and support. No, it's definitely not worth it for get what the they need to do too. there. I mean, you're just gonna see them pushing in very heavily. I think Zach is just taunting at this point, holding the minion wave. 
They're trying to help them be able to get that better push in. Does have the tanky stats to be able to last there. And Blue has been finally going for that first dragon. Does secure the ocean break. Grim ease and just the side of of Rutgers is just smashing down on them. Still a 6, 5k gold lead here, up 10 kills, up an Ocean Dragon next minute into the game. Yeah, I think that Delaware just needs to funnel as much gold as possible into this Caitlyn and hope she can scale up and get to a late game to outscale the Ezreal and really do damage in these fights. Yeah, that's what they want to go for, but you can see this Zack here with Ninja Tabby and a completed thornmail, the uh, Seeker's Arm Guard and the Aegis on the side of Kastin and Thresh. The completed Zonias now for Kastin. This is just going to be a possibly challenging game now on the side of University of Delaware. Yeah, I'm really hoping that that Glacial Shroud on Trundle is going to turn into a Zeke's Harbinger that he will put on the Caitlyn. It is a really good item for them to pick up, but we got a fight going down in the bot lane. Trundle going on to the Urgot, the ult coming out, and Urgot just isn't tanky enough, and Cho will manage to chomp him down and get a kill back. But at the same time in the mid lane, Talia is going to fall to the Cassidy, and Cassidy is popping his Zonyas, stepping on a trap, but there's just not enough damage, and the danger of Zack zoning everyone off. Zack is going to actually fall to the Caitlyn, the hook lands on Janna flash forward and ulting. The slows from the Cho's Vorpal Spikes hitting onto the Ezreal forced to flash and heal away. But he manages to get out, so it's a two for one in favor of Delaware, and that was actually really good for them. A little bit too greedy by the Zac in the mid lane. Yep, yeah, they've got some they've got some house money that they can play with right now, so it's not too big of a loss, but we'll see if they can get anything else out of it. You have teleport coming in from the Urgot coming from behind. Does have home guards now. It is a four on four, but the Janna really loves doesn't have all He's gonna be killed off by the Cassidy. The show knocked back by the Urgot and killed by Ezreal. Urgot ulting the Trundle and killing him, and Caitlyn forced the flash to avoid the fresh hook. And they just, they overstayed their welcome in the mid lane and got punished for it by the Urgot responding with teleport and now Rutgers is heading straight towards Baron. Yep, and that is likely a very, very free Baron backing from the side of Delaware. And that's just, yeah, let's see Baron try to peel back. They tried to use the get a little bit more offensively and they got punished for it. Really might be caught out here. Yeah, going to be caught out the flash from Cassidy. And you got a 7 1 and 7 cast versus a 1 7 5 Talia. You got a cheeky MIA pinion coming out onto the cast and as he killed the Talia. But this Cassidy has very much come online and outscaled the Talia at this point in the game. Absolutely, you just can see where they've just got so many more advantages right now. And you Likely correct about the Zeke's Harbinger as he does have the Aegis built up on the yep, side. And the that Another fight for the here. They're, it looks like they're both dead. Zach picking up both of the kills. And Rutgers looks like they're just going to start steamrolling through the Delaware towers in the mid lane with the Baron buff and the picks. Thresh might get picked off by the Talia and the Trundle Pillar. Trundle. Will, will fall to the Cassidy in the, more than likely if he if he gets over the wall. It does not kill the Thunder. The Thea will die though. And the Cho just completely caught out of position. Tries to ult, but doesn't get it off. We did get it off. But oh, he did get it off. Got it up on the Zach, who still has the pass available. And they're just continuing this march down midway. They can end here if they want to. They should pop out again. East Coast area is about to be deleted. Does get deleted. You got the Jan and the Trouble to hold off against four with Baron Buff. This game is as good as over in the eyes of Blood Ghost. Yeah, this game is very much done. That Zack pick has been huge, but he does get a little greedy, dies to the Talia. They're just diving at this point, trying to pick up as many kills as possible while they end the game. Yeah, have the stats, see what they can do. They I are think they goal, but that tower is greedy a little bit down. too much to end the game. 
Looks like they're just gonna back off and reset the show. Teleport coming in. Kalia walling up, but the Cho was alone and he's going to be flash out. And the Cassidan will solo kill the Janna. Trundle caught up front. Ezreal picking off a Chobe Jeff with his ultimate. Cassidan trying to get more, but getting poked low by the Talia. Let's see if they can end now with a 3v5 in the mid lane. Ergot flashing with the ultimate. And you do have Zach picking up now a Moroa Namaka on the Zach. There's some bonus. DM damage to throw in there, and that tower will fall thanks to the empowered cannon minion there. And it looks like right now it is going to match point on the side of Rutgers unless Delaware can pull off a miracle, but I don't yeah, think he's in miracle right now. now. A much faster game than last time, too. Absolutely smashing job from the side of Rutgers. Brings it now up 2-0.